Hello. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a little loud. I don't know how to turn that down at all, so I'll just close it off. Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Downs, and that was my attempt at some background music. It came out a little bit loud, but welcome to my live stream. Here's what I'm up to. I'm going to do this. Deploying a serverless Jamstack site with Redwood JS, Fauna, and Vercel. Assume it's called Versailles. Now let's be clear here. I've never heard of any of these things. I've heard of Jamstack, uh, which is just a generic term. Yeah, but Redwood JS, Fauna, and Vercel, I've never heard of any of these. Uh, I haven't read the article. I took a quick look at it, but I haven't read it, so I don't really know what I'm facing. I, and what I'm doing here is not showing you how to do this, although maybe I'll show you how to do this. We'll see how the video works out. What I'm doing is showing you how I think and reason when I go about doing this. So here's the article that I'm working from. It's on CSS Tricks. It just came out a couple days ago, three days ago. So here we go. Okay, so Redwood is a framework for serverless applications that pulls together React. I've heard of React. It's a uh, JavaScript front-end framework uh, created by Facebook. GraphQL is a database, and Prisma is, I guess, well, it says for database queries. So, okay, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, here's where we get to the meat of the matter. So we need to install Yarn to use the Redwood CLI command line interface to get going. Once that's good to go, here's what to run in a terminal. Now I can't remember whether I've installed Yarn or not. I'm on a brand new computer here. It's my new Alienware. And I might as well show it to you because it's cool. So. There's my brand new computer. Um, it's already got wires and stuff sticking out of it at random, but oh well. Um, that's actually just all the setup for this little video that I'm doing. I'll have to fix all that later. Anyhow, um, so that's what I'm using. So I don't know if I've installed Yarn, but we get a handy link here. So let's install Yarn. So here's Yarn, operating system, Windows, da 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 da, download installer. That's easy enough. Save file. I'm doing this on my own computer rather than, say, the NRC computer because I want to know that my computer works. And uh, so I'm not going to be subjected to any corporate restrictions like downloading software, downloading and installing software. How's the sound doing? Yeah, sound looks good. Okay. Uh, Yarn. Okay, and it's an MSI, which I know is an installable or an executable file. So it's coming from Yarn. So next, BSD license. That's the Berkeley System Distribution. It's an open source license. Uh, okay, program files. Yep, uh, this, this computer, I put all my program files on C. Uh, but it's also got a, a larger data disk. The C disk is kind of small. But the data disk is where I'll put all of my data. We'll see that later. But we'll install Yarn on C because it's a solid state drive and it's super fast. So install. And we'll wait while the setup wizard installs Yarn. And yes, I don't know if you saw that. Uh, Oh, well, that was fast. Um, so anyhow, uh, what that was was a pop-up asking if I'm giving permission to make changes on my um, hard drive, and I said yes. So Yarn appears to be installed. Uh, okay. 
I could have used something called chocolatey or scoop, but I didn't. Um, I just used the installer. Chocolatey is a package manager for Windows. Nah, never mind. I don't need that. All right. So now, see up here it says terminal, and that's the only sign that we're using a terminal. So there are different kinds, different ways to access the terminal, but I use at least as my starting point. Don't you love this bug in Windows where it deletes all of your uh, all of your little images? Apparently, you can fix that if you resize it to make it small and then big again. And there you go but I'm not going to do that for each and every one of those that would be silly so I just kind of suffer along but okay over here um, is my PowerShell I'll make that visible so you can actually see it anyways so sometimes I run this as administrator if I'm doing system level tasks but I'm just going to run it as a user today so here's PowerShell, it's vanilla straight out of the box. So, um, so I've installed Yarn, but I don't know if it works yet. So I'll just test node is not recognized. Okay. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay, so see, here you go, right? So here we're, we're into this paragraph now watch what happens if I try to run this command all right so we'll come back here all right yeah no does not recognize this no why not okay yarn is a package manager for node node is a JavaScript framework now this article doesn't bother to tell me that I need to have node already installed why because you probably already have it installed uh, unless you're me working off a brand new computer etc so that's the sort of thing that really plagues these kind of articles is you know this just this missing step and our missing step is on step one that's the stuff that really used to you know while I was just getting started with this really used to defeat me okay uh, I don't know if anyone's watching on the uh, video. Um, anyhow, uh, so Node. So I'm just doing a Google search on Node. You notice I'm using Firefox because that's the only thing to use. So Node.js, download for Windows. Uh, I'll use the recommended for most viewers because it's probably going to work save file all right and here's the little download thing if you're using chrome or something your downloads will show up down here somewhere as i recall i don't like using chrome uh, for a variety of reasons but mostly i think firefox is an ethical browser and chrome less so uh, okay so there's the thing i just downloaded i'm gonna, I'm gonna click on it it's an executable file. I'll go OK. I'll click Next. I accept the terms of the license agreement. What is the license agreement? I haven't a clue. Blah, blah, blah. It's not a common name. MIT license. So, OK. Next. On C again. Next. So this is all the stuff that's going to add to path is really important. Otherwise, it will not recognize Node as a command. <laughs> so next, automatically installed. Oh, there's Chocolatey. Remember Chocolatey? Let's do that because, you know, it's better to install the necessary tools. All right, that was again asking me if I wanted to make a change. So now the setup wizard is installing nose, not nose, node.js. Node has been installed. Yay. And press any. Okay, so this is the install additional tools. What's happening here? 
is it's running a script off the command line, so it's popping up in this uh, terminal window. But it just says press any key. I'll press the space bar. Um, as is without any warranties. Yeah, let's press the space bar again. So now we're going to get chocolatey. And here's PowerShell that I was using before. It launched it on its own this time, so I should have two windows running. Yeah, there they are. Oh, it's sort of off the edge of the screen there, eh? Yeah. I wonder if I can fix that on the video while we're playing. Yeah. Well, let me just make this a little smaller so it fits a bit better. There we go. I don't want to make it smaller because I want you to be able to see, but that's all the stuff running off to the side. I'm going to leave that kind of covered for now, but just keep in mind that's everything. Uh, so it's still installing, so we've got some time to play here. Okay. All right. And on the other side, just my recycle bin. If anything important shows up over there, I'll show you. Okay, still downloading and installing. This used to take forever when I was on the Bell network uh, because they do not provide fiber to the home in rural Ontario. So now I'm on a cable network offered by Tech Savvy. Thank you, Tech Savvy. You have given me usable internet speeds again. So, oh, it's got to install all kinds of stuff. Here we go. Here's Python being installed. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that looked like Redis, which is a database. .NET FX. We're getting the whole works here installed. Can I, can I scroll up, see what else it's installing? Uh, it's kind of hard to do while it's installing. So, la di da di da but, you know, this is pretty typical if you're just starting out especially. Uh, it looks crazy, but right now this isn't really anything to worry about. Um, it's just putting the system configuration in that you need. Um, so, okay, that's chocolatey. So, Redis... T140. So Redis, I recognize as a database. I think that's the Redis database, but maybe it isn't. See where it's coming from. Visual Studios, Microsoft. Oh, there's more stuff being installed. Um, okay. So it had to install Visual Studio 2017 build tools. Like I said, fresh computer, right? Brand new computer. So we're starting off, we still haven't, maybe while this is doing it, I can try to look ahead a little bit, maybe anticipate what's going to be happening. So let's, let's give that a few minutes to keep installing. And we'll go back to our article. So what will we be doing? So what we'll be doing is creating Redwood app. Uh, in a directory called CSS tri Tricks. And then we'll move into the directory yarn, read, write, dev. So I think we're creating a directory there. I'll check it when we do that. And that should install a thing called Redwood. I always worry these guys so many of these sites you see, you see these dots, that tells me that they're running on an Apple computer. Um, I don't know what browser they're using, it probably doesn't matter, but Apple has its quirks. So, but we'll see, it should all work. So, okay, and then thank you for choosing Redwood Router. So what a router does is It'll take input from somewhere and redirect it to somewhere else. Give it a root, in other words. So it's kind of a neat thing if you want a front end that you can send commands to, and then in the back end, the command will go to different kinds of applications. And, and we already know um, 
it's going to go to uh, uh, the application um, GraphQL. Um, so, and I'm not sure what else, <laughs> maybe just GraphQL. Um, but you know, it's nice to have a router to send commands to a database. It gives you a lot more flexibility, especially if you want to change the database later or uh, you know, move the database from one place to another. Okay, how are we doing? Still installing, really? That is not a good sign when it just sits there like that. But it's Visual Studios, right? So it could be, let's do, I'm gonna do a Control-Alt-Delete and open the Task Manager Oh, and I'm get, getting the minified view of the task manager here. Oh, where is that? Where are these arrows? There we go. That's the view that I usually use. Okay. Installer, OBS Studio. That's what I'm using to do this uh, broadcast. Um, so, Logio Installer. So, it's doing something. There's Firefox, Amazon Music, which I can probably close because I'm not listening to any music at the moment. That's what we need, right, is a soundtrack for this installation. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the, did I kill the, the website? Oh, maybe I did. I was going to go back and give us some more background music while we wait and wait. See, you know, again. Is it working or is it broken? Is it downloading? Well, I can tell if it's downloading. Uh, network traffic. Amazon sending some information back to the home office, I see. Uh, otherwise, I'm not seeing anything doing any downloading. Let's click on that and that'll order them. No. So, Microsoft OneDrive doing a little check in. Um, look at all that Adobe garbage running. <laughs> look at all that Amazon garbage running. Maybe I'll just close that because I'm not using it. Oh, here we go. The Logi Capture Launch Logitech Capture. Oh, that's. Yeah. That Logi Capture is uh, because I wanted to run a driver for my camera. Um. Because I moved my camera over from my old computer right before I did this. So now we're going to get that. And up to, okay, I'm going to close that and see if it goes away. <laughs> Still installing Visual Studio workload. Boy, it'd sure be nice to have some kind of indication. Yeah, I know it's not available. I tried to close you, remember? All right. So, right, I was gonna get rid of Amazon. And there we go, that should close Amazon. I should probably close Steam as well. So I'll do that down here. I was playing No Man's Sky earlier. So, Our attempt is beginning to look a little uh, not so good. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I don't need chocolatey to make all of this work, so I can just leave it doing all of that stuff. But so I'll go back to my original window now. Uh, it'll still say node is not recognized. Um, so you, you have to close your PowerShell window and then open it again in order to uh, make that the case. So let's type node. Welcome to node. All right, let's type yarn. Uncaught reference yarn is not defined. 
maybe because I installed yarn before I installed node. So let's try reinstalling yarn. So that's uh, in case you're wondering, that's the download. Remember, I downloaded it earlier. It shows up here. It's still sitting there, so I'll just use the same installer instead of downloading it again. Run the setup. Okay. Repair. Right. Let's repair it. Let's see if that works. Finish. Okay. Now. So we'll open a new window, a new PowerShell window. And let's see if it likes it now. Yes. <laughs> All right. So Yarn is installed. So that thing is still off doing whatever it's doing over there in the background. Uh, so we'll just let it run. And if it's not done by the time I'm done, we'll just kill it because I don't care enough about it to not kill it. All right. So, okay, let's go back to, so we're back on track. What a nightmare, right? Uh, you know, I mean, there should be a little blurpy here saying, you know, make sure Node is installed. Make sure Yarn is installed. You know, it's just a standard template they could throw in there. People who know would just skip it, but people who don't know would have some guidance. All right, so now let's create Redwood app. So here's what's happening here. Because uh, you're wondering where on earth did this come from? And so what's happening is Yarn is accessing somewhere out there on the internet a, um, a repository of applications or a registry of applications and it's going to find one called redwood app retrieve it and create it here in the subdirectory css tricks so again it'd be nice but, you know, I mean, I know that this is right in the middle of, you know, this is for people who are pretty experienced at this, but this is the sort of thing. It would help if there were a sentence that says what's happening. But again, it's, you know, the sentence wouldn't be helpful to people who are pretty experienced, but it sure would be helpful to people, well, like me, who are not experienced or trying something for the first time. Okay, anyhow. So I have used yarn before and that's how come I know this stuff but you know, can you imagine somebody who doesn't know or hasn't used yarn before all right uh, so let's do that so we'll open up our window again so I'll just keep it so now the trick here I could type it but I'm way too lazy for that so I'm gonna highlight it with my mouse and then I'll use a right click copy. I could also use a control C, but this way I don't have to lift my hand off the mouse. Now that I'm over here, um, I'm gonna do a right click. Now PowerShell is different from everything else in the world. When I do a right click, it pastes it. Why? I don't know. But I do know if you do a right click, it pastes. So there you go. So now I'm going to hit enter and see resolving packages. It's a package manager, right? So, okay. Critical security. Watch for those <laughs> critical security vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, we're just messing around here, so it doesn't matter so much, but you know, watch for those. Okay, so what's happening? Fetching packages, linking dependencies. So, you know, in case one package depends on another package, building a fresh package. Okay, so now we've installed it with binaries. So low level executable scripts. Now we're gonna create the app, done that. Now we're gonna 
install the packages. Running yarn install, this could take a while. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it didn't take a while. <laughs> I was going to take the time to go see how the other thing is doing, and it's still doing nothing. But now, okay, so what do we got? Thanks for trying out Redwood. You're very welcome. Um, oh, I didn't want it to go in there. Because it's on C, remember? I wonder if... Oh, uh, I bet you if I had put it... If I had specified where I wanted it to go. Yeah. Because I want it on D. I don't want it sitting here in my home directory. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go CD... D. Oh, let's type it correctly now. Oops. D full column. Okay. Now that's, oops, so I got a bit of garbage in there. Well, that's a lot of garbage in there. Wow, where did all that come from? Images. Oh, I know where it came from. It came from OneDrive. All right. CD. I put all my code projects in a subdirectory called code projects. Now here's a, here's a, a pro tip for you too. See how I've typed half the name. Now I'm going to hit tab. Right. And now it's going to give me the full name of the directory. So I save a lot of my typing time like that. So, you know, just CD, DO, tab. And it'll spell out Docker or whatever. Uh, you have to go far enough in so that it has a unique choice. That way I don't have to type up the whole directory. Okay, so here we go. All right, so now let's yarn create. Now, now this should create it in a CSS tricks subdirectory under code projects. It's going to do all the same thing again. It may have cached some of this stuff, so it might be faster. Although it was pretty fast. Yeah, you see how fast that came down? So now we're in this. It could take a while. And while we're waiting for take a while, I'm going to get rid of the other stuff in C, which I don't want to keep. C is for programs only. Programs only. So where did it go? CSS tricks. Let's just remove that entire directory. This is called disk management. <laughs> Look at all that garbage. This is the thing to note, right? Um, when you're downloading big things, uh, <laughs> 84,000 separate items, big things like, uh, say, Redwood, you're downloading a lot of files. So let, let's go into oh okay it's not going to let me descend in because it's in the trash but we can descend in on the other one so let me just empty the recycle bin here yes all right let's go to D code projects CSS tricks okay so this is all the stuff that got installed just to install Redwood. So here's the README. README files are always useful to read. So what does it say? Okay, Redwood JS has not reached a say, stable version 1.0 and should not be considered suitable for production. That's fine. We're playing. We use Yarn as our package manager setup. See, terminal, okay. So that's just telling us how to get this program up and running. And interestingly, it opened all of this in an app called Visual Studio Code, which I may come back to in this video. We don't know yet. Okay, so there's the node modules. There's the web stuff. So, okay, we know it's there. So, there we go. So what's next? 
well CD CSS tricks again I don't feel like typing it because I'm lazy so I'll copy it and then select window there we go and I can right click to paste oh it's not gonna okay let's try that again it's like that sometimes copy paste all right now yarn rw dev and again i'm assuming this is making a directory but now let's see see we already have a bunch of stuff in here ls is the command to list the contents of this directory so but rw dev is there already a dev nope okay so let's right click yarn run oh it's running okay uh, all right so it's not creating a directory okay Windows firewall needs some permissions yes I am going to allow access oh and it even pops me into the browser window okay so let's stop and think about what happened here <laughs> uh okay so uh run w run window maybe runs whatever dev so there's going to be an environment named dev uh, a lot of these programs you can run them using different environments or different commands so this one is running the dev version of it oh you see him right and i was wrong about it copying before but but okay but we know it's running running at localhost 8911 so localhost that's this computer uh, 8911 is the port that it's running on watching files okay so it's watching files here so there's a subdirectory that it's looking at project is running at and it's blue on blue so it's hard to read so let's make that better by making it yellow on blue oh how annoying so how are we going to get this we're going to oh there we see i'm going to highlight all of that now i'm going to control c to copy all of that and i'm going to open up uh, i'll use a little text you, you can use wordpad or notepad i use something called note tab for a variety of reasons so there it is uh, there's a free version uh, okay it's, it's going to give me a, an annoying prompt whoops oh okay uh, <laughs> all apps note tab note tab standard trial All right, so I guess I'm using WordPad after all. Uh, I don't. It's I don't even know where it is. I never. I always just use Note Tab, but I can't seem to run Note Tab. Um, so Windows Accessories, right? WordPad. Okay, to start. Let's go back to start. WordPad. Put WordPad up here. Let's move it to the office area. Now, control or right click paste. And this is all the stuff. All right. And just, okay. So it says it's running at localhost 8910. So it's kind of weird. Oh, yeah, there we go. 8910. All right. So uh, this is my web browser, right? So, okay, good. All of that worked. Can you believe it? Uh, okay, so let's go back now to, to we're on the third step. <laughs> okay, 
but that's okay. Yeah, I mean, take your time with these things. I don't care if this is a two hour video, um, which is a good thing. So, okay. So created it and now we're running it in dev. All right, so our project's front end is running on 89.10. Our back end is running on localhost 89.11. So the front end is the user facing interface, right? Um, trying to get that right the front end is the user facing interface that faces me the back end is the application facing interface that'll face services like GraphQL remember it's a router right so it's going to take my commands from the front end and route them to different services in the back end so that's what appears to be set up here let's go to 8910 in the browser if all is good, the, red, the Redwood landing page should load up. And this case of a stupid Apple browser here, but a wonderful Firefox browser on Windows. Where did it put it? There it is. Welcome to Redwood JS. Thank you for choosing. Okay, so you can add a home page route like so. Or root. You can tell I'm from the Ottawa Valley when I say route. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty hard to read, but again, we'll just, okay, that, that helps a bit. Maybe I'll copy that and put it in WordPad and make it bigger. So let's make this bigger so we can read it. All right, so. Okay, so we can make a home page. So import router and root from the router. Makes sense. And then the router, so the root path. And then the root not found page. Okay. Not sure what that means yet. I, I have theories. Um, but uh, okay. I'm sure this will tell us. Maybe it won't. We don't know. All right, so let's go down. Uh, the Redwood starting page indicates the front page, the front end of our app is ready to go. It also provides a nice, although vague, instruction of how to start creating custom routes. Okay, it's in version 0 0.2. Version 0 0.2, wonderful, okay. I love testing stuff that isn't finished yet. Okay, directory structure. Okay, so this now is going to be how Redwood works. So inside it, it's got an API directory. Don't know what that is, don't care. Source is gonna be functions. For example, a function for graphql.js. Library is a database library. That's all we've got so far. The web is the stuff we're going to use for our website. So the public, so uh, you know that's just the uh, the core root. Uh, badly explained. It's just in the home directory of the website. So the fav icon is the little picture at the top. You know, like I have the little grasshopper icon. Readme is a readme page. Robots.tests, text basically telling robots what to do, like search engines. And then all the source, index HTML. I'll bet you that's where we're going to put our root, but we'll find out. So, so okay, the main thing, things are split into two main directories, web and API. Yep. API be well, let's not jump to conclusions here. Let's wait. Web contains front end code, pages, layouts, and components. Okay, so that's the part that faces me. API contains the back end code for all the other stuff. Good. Okay, no problem. Redwood assumes Prisma as a data store. 
which of course in any real world we would use but we're going to use fauna instead why use fauna when we could just as easily use firebase a third option well it's just a personal preference <laughs> google purchased firebase okay uh we could have access to a wider range of features than what Fauna offers. So, whatever. Personal preference. Since we will be querying Fauna directly, we can delete the Prisma directory and everything in it. We can delete all the code in db.js. Just don't delete the file, whatever file they mean, uh, maybe db.js, as we'll be using it to connect to the Fauna client. So, should we? We can, but should we? I don't know. What are we looking at? Let's come back here. Oh, it doesn't detach. Uh, okay, so you notice I don't have a, a prompt or anything now. That's because in this window, uh, Redwood is still running. Um, normally, if you, you run a server which Redwood is, right? Uh, in a window, you execute uh, a detach option, which will detach it from this and just run it in the background. Uh, but this isn't, this isn't doing that. Now, I can stop our server at any time by typing Control C, and then I'd have access to this window again. But that's not gonna help me now, I want to use the window without stopping the server so I have to open up another PowerShell window you should number these or color code them or something all right so CV D now C O tab right code projects CSS tab CSS tricks now let's list the contents here so this is the so there we go good I wish I could make this bigger for you I wonder if I can Mute. there's probably a way but I don't know what it is uh, properties cursor size font uh, in case you're wondering what I did there, I moved my mouse over the top and then right clicked because that's where you can find options a lot of the time. Then I picked properties. Font. This will make my font much bigger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why didn't I do that before? Because I'm stupid. All right. So here's the API directory. Remember, here's the web directory. Now, the fauna stuff that we can delete, or no, the, uh, the Prisma stuff that we can delete is going to be in the API directory. Now, let's list what's in there. And ooh, the whole window got bigger. There we go, now to manageable. And I don't see it anywhere here, so let's try source. Oh yeah, there's the DB directory, right? So let's try DB first. And you know, seeds.js, whatever that is. CD dot dot just takes me up back to where I was, the API directory, let's look in the source. list what's in there functions I don't know where it is let's just assume we don't have to delete it and you know rather than run the risk okay 
All right. We'll start by taking a look at the website since it should look familiar to developers. Got that right. Uh, using with experience using React or other single page application framework. All right. But what happens? Uh, when we build a React app, it takes the entire site and shoves it all into one big ball of JavaScript and then shoves that ball of JavaScript into the root DOM node. So yeah, React is interesting. Uh, React, you have a website, right? And your website has a whole bunch of objects in it. Uh, forms, images, links, whatever. React will build a complete copy of that website inside itself. And so that's what's happening here. When it's when it's shoving this ball of JavaScript into the root DOM node, it's basically building the second copy. That's what makes React so fast. Everything's happening inside the JavaScript instead of inside your web page. It'll only update the web page once it's done all of its thing inside the, uh, the JavaScript. And yeah, that's an aside. Uh, and for those of you who are experts at React, which I'm not, feel free to correct me. But that's my understanding of what happens there. Okay, so what are we doing now? So here's index.html. Let's see if we can find that. All right. Um, I'm going to, in order to do this, I'm going to use an application called Visual Studio Code. Um, this is my go-to application for any programming that I do. Um, so it's, uh, oopsie, that's my, uh, you can also just type VS Code, right? It's, it's widely known. It's made by Microsoft. It's free and open source. Visual Studio, I said video, Visual Studio Code is wonderful. Uh, if you look at it, it's basically got three major sections. Here's, let's, let's, let's look at what the image, oh, it's not gonna show me the image separately, is it? Yeah, yeah, view background image. So here's the window, right? So uh, over here is basically your files, your directory, your tools, whatever. Over here is your editing area and then down here is a terminal that you can run your code in now that's like taking this see here's here's a terminal we've been working with the terminal so that's like taking one of these right and then it's like well uh, wordpress remember we had wordpress we were doing stuff in to do some typing, so here, right? So, so let's move that over here, and then our directories and our tools and all of that. That's like our directories and our tools and all of that, right? So, this is basically what Visual Studio Code does. You see how I've got this set up now? This clear away some of that stuff from the background here so that it's really slipping through all you know you just don't want that I don't even need this running at all <laughs> uh, task manager I don't need running okay so this is like Visual Studio Code right here's my text editor here's my terminal and here's my file directory that's Visual Studio Code, except Microsoft has taken all of these three things and put it into one application. I've already installed it. I'll do the little resize hack here so that we can view the, uh, the icon. So, and there it is. So I'm gonna open it up. So, here on the left-hand side is the directory. Here in the middle, is the the code that i'm working on and uh i'll just close that for now again brand new installation new terminal so here's my terminal it's kind of hard you, you have to get used to it right because the lines are really faint but um 
Yeah, they probably could make them bigger, but you know, once you're used to it, you don't need big lines anymore, and then they're just a distraction. So here's my terminal, here's my editor, and now I'm going to open a directory. So let's open a directory or open a folder. So open, okay, open folder. And the folder I'm going to open is this CSS tricks folder. Remember, because that's where I put everything. So here's our API directory like before. Here's our web directory like before. Now it's probably a little easier to do our navigating. <laughs> it's a little way easier. So I still don't know where those things are. Node modules. Oh, there's Prisma. That's the thing I could delete entirely. Uh, Babel, I guess I am using. Source some stuff anyhow but as we agreed previously we won't be doing that so here's the terminal new terminal so there um, do I want to install the recommended extensions for this repository this is really nice right it, Visual Studio Code has extensions to make working with this particular kind of repository easier I'm not going to do that Normally I would, but let's not get distracted. So, okay. So, there's my Visual Studio Code. There's my old stuff, but now I can just minimize, minimize. This is the, uh, it's running. And, and I don't actually need this anymore. So let's come back to our website. Uh, right. So I don't need that anymore. Let's go back to the CSS tricks. Here we go. Okay. So let's find index.html. Index.html is in the web directory. Should be somewhere. Yes. Maybe in public. No, that's where those uh, robots.txt and stuff was. So source, there it is, index.html. Is it what they promised? Yes, it is. Uh, it's exactly the same, I think. Sometimes it's not, right? Because, you know, this article was written, well, this week. A year from now, if I'm reading this article, uh, they may have changed the default uh, index page and then they'll be different happens a lot that's why it's important to try to use as recent an article like this as possible all right while red uh, redwood uses jamstack in the documentation and marketing of itself redwood doesn't do any pre-rendering yet like next or gatsby can but is still jamstack in that it's shipping static files and hitting APIs with JavaScript for data. So it's sent by shipping static files. That means that the file you get from it, the web page that you get from it, is a static file. It's not going to have any live interaction with the back end. Uh, the live interaction with the back end is happening behind the scenes in the back end, right? Okay index.js contains our root component that big ball of javascript okay so i assume then that that's where all the react stuff is i'm assuming that they've already put that in there for us but let's see you notice just as an aside you notice as i'm doing this right i'm not just following the instructions step by step that would be stupid maybe you could but you won't learn anything right so i'm, I'm checking everything i'm looking at things like so now i'm going to look at index.js so yeah look at that import react dom from react dom so it's using node this is a node command to import the react document object model from the source it's 
going to be somewhere in all of that stuff that we downloaded probably in node modules uh, from react dom it's not node modules unless it's oh wait it might be down here <laughs> yeah that's i'll go chase down here require there we go look at all this react stuff all of these this is all react javascript code there's react dom right and it's all been installed as node modules node is a javascript framework which has all of this back end stuff so node contains all of the react code that you need the react code remember creates a complete duplicate of your website and uses that to interact with third-party services i know i know it's a mess but it all it makes sense but it, it really takes a while to get your mind around it you have to do a whole bunch of things like this and, and do the looking behind the scenes okay so index.js has that uh and react dom dot render renders our application wonderful redwood provider uh Okay, the roots component or route. Um, funny how I pronounce that differently at different times. Okay, are contained within the Redwood provider tags. Flash, flash. That's kind of weird. We haven't seen flash mentioned at all before. Where did that come from? I don't know. Um, Flash uses the contact. I'm sure it's not like Adobe Flash. I don't know what it is. Uh, use Flash hook. Something. It's something that they're just not going to tell us about. We'll just do a quick search and see if it's anywhere else in here. Maybe I missed it while I was reading. No, all references to Flash are in this one paragraph, and this one paragraph does not tell us what it is. Not much we can do about that. So let's hope it's not important. <laughs> okay, fatal error boundary. The provider itself is then contained within the fatal error boundary component which is taking in fatal error page as a prop, as a property. This defaults your website to an error page when all else fails. Right. Okay, so and here's the code. Just make it a bit bigger. So it's gonna import all of these libraries from Node, including some CSS to style the page. Then it's going to render the page and it's going to render the page by assuming there was an error. But if there's not an error, here's all the stuff that we do. But if nothing happened here, it was an error. <laughs> and then we'll send all of that to this applicant, this function, get element by ID. And so this is, remember, uh, React makes the copy, and then there's the actual web page. So now get element by ID. We're going to take that and move it over here. That's the last line. Something like that. Maybe that's not exactly how it does it, but it'll be something like that. All right. Contains all of our roots. Each root is specified with a root. The Redwood router attempts to match the current URL to each root. So the idea here is the URL will have, you know, whatever, whatever local host in our case, slash something. That something should correspond to a root. The only exception is the not found root, which is what you get 
when you can't find the root. Okay, so and that's here. So here's the not found root. So, okay, good. Pages. Let's start creating pages. Okay, okay. All right, now our application is set up. Sure, we're about a quarter of the way through. It, it'll go faster. <laughs> we haven't even touched the GraphQL. Okay, we we'll use the Redwoods command line interface. Generate page command to create a named root function called home. This renders the home page when it matches the URL path to slash. Okay. And this is kind of cool. We're going to use yarn to write all of that code for us so we don't have to do it. Oh, I love that. So let's copy that. Now, you notice, remember, they haven't said anything, but uh, here's our application running merrily along, right? Um, maybe we can, maybe we can make a change while it's running, maybe not. I'm betting not because usually you can't so I'm going to stop this with a control C terminate batch job yeah because I'll just type the Y for yes all right and now we, okay so now it's stopped and you'll notice if we come back here to our page if I try to run it It's not running, right? So I'm unable to connect. Okay, so now let's see what happens if yarn RW. Let's make this bigger, like I made the other one bigger. Properties, font, uh, 20 should be good enough. Size our window just like before. All right, good. Okay, so here's our command. And I'll hit enter. I'll hit enter. And look. Ah, okay, good. There we go. <sighs> Stupid thing. All right. Now, it's, yeah, you see, I did have to close it. So now. Let's see what happens. And we got nothing. Why? Updating roots file. Okay, all this did is update the roots file. Right? Yeah. RW dev. RWG page home. Hmm. All right. So we'll back up a step. Now, what I'm going to do, another pro tip. Um, so you see this here. Okay, this is what I just typed, right? Now this is this is my window again so there's there's my uh, there's my command prompt all right now here's my keyboard I'm gonna press the up key and on my screen now we see the command that I just typed in before. I'll do it again so you can see it. All right. See, I'm pressing the up and down key. So, and it keeps a list of all the commands that I entered. So I just press this up and down key 
and navigate through my list of commands. So now, we're back here. So now I'll go back to the command, oops. <laughs> uh, go back to the command that I was in. So, so yarn rw dev, which is what I ran before. Um, it's right here. And I'll run it again. Boy, this doesn't seem like it. Oh, never mind. All right. And now it should work in 8910. Ah, okay. So now. page not found right but let's just try the slash no but it does say home page okay and it's telling me where to find this home page so my default okay so all right figured it out so it accepted the command that I gave it Let's come back to here. It accepted this command. Uh, this one here. The uh, well, it's the whole thing, right? So I forget where I typed that in, but it wasn't uh, yarn. Yeah, somewhere up there. Anyhow, it accepted that command. And then I re so I stopped it, typed in the command, and then restarted it, and that's how the command the whole thing worked. Maybe, who knows, maybe I could have opened another PowerShell window and just typed in the command while it was still running, and that might have worked. Maybe not. We don't know. Okay, so let's go back to here. So, so this command performed four separate actions. Created a home page. Okay, the name specified in the first argument, that's this, gets capitalized and page is appended to the end. Because, of course, right? You know. Uh, it creates a test file, uh, homepage.test.js, um, the single passing test, okay, we're not doing test driven development, so we don't need to worry about that. One day I'll have to learn about that. It creates a storybook file, don't know why, don't know what that is, and adds a new root or route that maps this path to that home page component. So if we go to web source pages, we'll see the home page directory containing the home page JS file. So let's go in here, Visual Studio Code again, web source pages. So web. source pages and there's home page and in that directory is the file we're looking for and there it is now I could have done all of that stuff that I've been doing in Visual Studio Code I could have done it down here as well an experienced developer probably would have Okay, so, and this is the home page that we just looked at, right? Look at this, right? So, constant home page, return, in other words, send back, 
the headline, the paragraph, find me in code, whatever, whatever. Uh, oh, that's not it. Here it is. Right, home page, find me in, etc., etc. So there it is. And see how they're using some code in here, right? link to me with and then they'll actually use the code to create the link so normally on a web page we'd be typing a href equals whatever but here we're putting in a link to and then the root to home which is our home directory okay all right, so far so good. Yeah, it gets tricky, it gets tricky. And then it exports the whole thing. Lovely. And here's the home page we just looked at. This home page has been set up as the main route. Okay, we're going to move, <laughs> we're going to move our page navigation into a reusable layout component which means we can delete the link. That's the thing we just looked at. And roots and ports as well as that stuff. So, okay. Can delete. Okay, so we're just changing the content. So let's do that. We'll just, how much of this do I want? We'll take all of this. Everything between the, say, return so let's go into Visual Studio Code. See, there's return. Okay, so I'm going to replace all of it. Yeah, there's our little angle brackets. Take all of this, delete that, and put in the text we just read. Does this need to be indented? Probably doesn't make a difference, but let's indent it just in case. Now we'll save this. We could do file save. I just use control S and that also saves it. Control S just so fast and it becomes a habit, right? Do something control S. Do something control S. Alright. This should change it and we can reload it. Oh if it actually yeah, it's React, right? You notice I didn't even have to reload it. I made the change and it just simply happened. Watch this. You're going to love this. Okay. All right. I've typed it. Now let me save it. Voila. See, that's how React does its thing. So, I made a change to the document object model, specifically this constant home page, and I made the change in React, and then React took that and updated the page in real time. Isn't that amazing? I think it's amazing. Uh, it just blows my mind. It was just like, <laughs> so, right. React has its downsides. Right. You know, it's, all of this stuff is just full stuff like that. Okay, that's why I love doing this so much. All right. I wonder if anybody's watching me live real time. I can't tell, right? We've been going for a while. Told you this might be a two hour video. I have no idea how long we've been going. I do know that we're still only about halfway. All right, let's stop playing and get back to it. All right, so now we'll create an about page. Right. So in this case, so here's another command. Let's try this. Let's try. Okay, so that's the command. Let me go into here. So I'm in my my right directory. This is my terminal, right? It's remember, it's just like this. 
just like one of these only here it is I'm gonna I'll try control V I don't think the right click works. oh it does okay the right click oh yeah because it's PowerShell so yarn so now I'm going to try to do this while the server is running and see if it works so I'll hit enter okay so it says it did all of that now since it's react it should have accepted the changes to the dom and then applied it now we won't see any changes in the page as a result so let's have a look no change but here's what i think and I'm, i haven't read this i haven't read ahead but i think that if we type about we should get an about page now and we did how cool is that? There's nothing there, right? But let's make one. <laughs> so we'll come back to our terminal here. All right. Let's make a page called string. All right. Look at that. There it is, Stephen Page, lead singer for the Bare Naked, Bare, Bare Naked Ladies, where he was. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, I love how it just happened. So, you see what I could do, right? Think about it. Now, I've been two hours doing this because I've been learning everything, but install forgotten what it's called uh, <laughs> redwood um, oh, I'm terrible. yeah install redwood um, run it and then start creating pages you know, you, you could actually be building your application in about, I don't know, a minute using this. It's taking me an hour, but the next time it'd take me a minute if I remembered all of this. But a big pro tip, right? Because I'm doing this video where I'm explaining every step of the way, I am much, much more likely to remember this next time. Okay, so uh, now let's make some edits to the about page. Where would the about page be? Well, probably going to be near the home page, right? So, okay. Fill the node module, source, pages, home page. Now look, about page, Stephen page. So, okay, here's the about page, the JavaScript, stories, tests. So let's go into the about page. So the test, I guess, is render successfully. Okay, stories. Still don't know what that means. It might just be metadata about this page. That'd be my guess. Again, just a guess. All right. So let's make some changes to the out page, about page. So, no, we know these were there last time. So all I really need is this. <laughs> Notice it's got emojis in it. Of course it would, it's UTF-8. So, about page. I love how they just use it's just a blank tag what's going on there in case you're wondering at least what I think is going on why why are they using blank tags well they need to use tags in order to create a document object model element doesn't matter what it's called in fact it might be confusing if it was called anything so just use a blank tag or an empty tag so we've created the document object model element 
and we'll return that just as an unnamed element and then the web page in this case react will put it wherever it's supposed to go and if it needs to be named it'll name it there all right so just because this is so much fun let's go back to the about page so there's what it was now i'm going to save it <laughs> and voila <laughs> Oh, I love this stuff. <laughs> this is the web. It's instant gratification for you. All right. So we're doing pretty well, right? Despite this is going a lot more smoothly than these sorts of articles normally go. Uh, we had a few glitches, but nothing we couldn't figure out. All right. So if we return to routes.js, we'll find our new routes, our new routes. Pretty nice that Redwood does this for us. Yes, it is. I've worked with other frameworks like, like Express, for example. You're doing all this stuff yourself. So let's, let's go have a look at routes.js just because they told us to. So let's find routes.js. There it is. Look at that. So you see, comes in and then returns whatever it finds or if it found not found, that's what it returns. See, and here, here's the path, there's the page, and there's the name. So, cool. Layouts. Because, of course. Is there a generator for layouts? Yes, there is. Yarn, RWG, layout blog. Okay, well, we know how to do this now. <laughs> There's probably a, a list of all of these commands in that, but for now, so I, I don't really know what these things stand for, but layout blog, that tells me that I'm gonna create a layout. Okay. All right, so let's try that. So now I know I can do it right here. I'll just do it here. Of course, this text is all small for you again, isn't it? Yeah. Oh well. Just I hope hope you're running it on full screen. That's all I can say, and I hope you have a decent sized screen. I guess. Uh, okay, so I've run that. So probably nothing happened in our app. I don't see anything that happened in our app, so I wouldn't expect that. Uh, don't need that anymore. All right. So okay, now what? So it's created a thing for us in our code. So let's come into our code pages layouts. Okay, so here we go. Source components, layouts, pages, and that's it, right? Yeah, so those three things. Components, have we looked at that? No, there's been nothing there yet. That's probably what comes next, but okay. Layouts, blog layout blog layout.js just like a page only a blog layout return children all right the children are probably going to be like you know the contents tab and anyhow whatever uh okay and there it is to create links between different pages we'll need to import the links from the router and create a link to each component and then pass the named routes function. Okay. So here's basically we're defining the children here. So link to home and about. copy this and export. I'm not really 
sure. Header, okay, this is the header. Okay, and then this is the main part of the blog. We don't have a sidebar yet, just the header and the main part of the blog. And then the main part of the blog would be the children, which are probably all the different posts. All right, so let's put that into this. Okay, so we're re replacing all of that with this, which we just copied. See how easy it is, just control C and it's there. And I'll save it. Okay, still hasn't done anything, has it? Nope, let's try reloading. Probably won't change anything. Nope, okay. We won't see anything different. We've created the blog layout, but we haven't imported it into any pages. But if we want it, now we just import it. So. do two things. First of all, we import it. Then we wrap the page with it. This is the children. All right, so let's do that. So let's go back to the home page. Pages. Home page. I'm just looking for preferences. I don't think it's so simple to move to increase the font on this. Preferences. Settings. Text editor. That's better, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. So let's find the home page now. Home page, home page .js. So we're importing. or replace it okay well this is the layout that has the import routes so I think we're replacing this with this so now we're importing the layout from here and here we'll import the uh, the routes and all of that okay and now home page the constant home page here's the return ah I remember before we had just those empty uh, tags now we have a value for those tags so we'll come back see they were empty before but now is this actually the home page yeah it is all right okay and because I love it when it happens we'll go back here we'll go back to the home page all right and let's watch the change happen in real time I'll hit control s <laughs> so there's my header with my two links And uh, <laughs> awesome. All right. So that's easy enough to do to the other pages as well. I wonder if I can add the link to Stephen in there. So what would I need to do? I would need to go back to the layout, blog layout, 
about control C copy that because I don't want to type all of that again so now all right to roots Steven and then the title that I want people to see all right now control s to save and there it is and it successfully takes me to my page perfect so I always try to take it a bit step past the instructions probably looking at a three hour video now aren't we <laughs> okay all right what's next that was pretty cool okay hey the navigation is taking shape we'll be taking there but we're enabled so okay they're just going to do the same thing that we did before so this basically this and then this says blog layout well that's pretty easy uh, i'll do that for both pages right now so let's go to the about page oh let's copy it first because i'm not going to remember it well more accurately i don't want to type it so import blog layout so i'm going to copy this Control c now we'll go to about page so this, and then was it, it was all lowercase, wasn't it? Was it? No, it wasn't. There was a, what's it called camel case blog layout. All right, so let's go back to the so blog layout. They call it camel case because it has humps in it, like a camel. That's what the capital letters do. So, okay, control S. And we'll go to Stephen's page and we'll do the same thing. Hold on, I can't expect that to work. See, import this. And there it is there. And now it closes here. All right, control S. So now that should work for all of them. We'll just quickly test it. Failed to compile. Oh, see, I made a mistake. So let's go back. <laughs> so now we see what happens when I make a mistake. So about, let's go back to the about page, or page.js. Notice it actually turned red because it has errors in it. See, and the web's descend all the way down. So let's fix that and everything will turn back to white again. There they go. Control S. There we are. Oh, I did something wrong here too. Because this link doesn't exist. Right. Okay. Wrote Stephen. I wonder why. Uh, hmm. Because well, I don't know why. Oh well. Well, let's just remove it, and that way, at least the page will work. Don't know why that didn't work though. But okay. Now we can navigate. Fauna schema definition language. We're only about halfway through. But at least we're using fauna now. Okay. Uh, okay, we need to make a new
Okay, next up, we'll, we'll now create our GraphQL schema so we can start working with data. Awesome, this is where the fun starts. So, we need to create a new file called sdl.gql, graph query language, schema definition graph query language. Save the file and upload it to Fauna's GraphQL Playground. <laughs> oh, isn't this lovely? Save the file and upload it to Fauna's GraphQL Playground. Note at this point, you will need a Fauna account to continue. What a bunch of jerks. There's a free tier that works just fine for what we're doing. Yeah, should have known there was a catch like two or three hours into working with us, this stuff. Yeah, just personal preferences, my eye. Remember back up above when you said, oh yeah, no, we're just doing this for personal preferences? Yeah. <sighs> okay, let's make a Fauna account. Register. Choose my GitHub account. All right, so new to Fauna class. I'm going to skip the tutorial. Okay, so Fauna is cloud. Okay. Okay, so Fauna will be the place in the cloud that our database is located. Okay, so it had to, our database was going to be in the cloud no matter what. It's probably this or wherever, right? Okay. So, all right. Oops. But, okay, so if you wonder if that went by pretty quickly there, there's my account. Uh, I just clicked on use my GitHub account. That's what I use for a lot of this kind of development stuff. If I ever want to integrate the stuff into GitHub later on, it's already I'm already using my GitHub. Uh, my coffee's cold. <laughs> All right, back to CSS. First session equals true. I probably don't need that anymore. Uh, let's just control H. History today. Oops. No, it doesn't that far. Ninety inches. All right. Remove that. It's just because I clicked from my instructions into Fauna, and now I don't have my instructions anymore. So I'll open Fauna in a new window. Am I still logged in? Yes, I am. And now I'll back space, or back button, back into my instructions. All right. <laughs> All right. So okay. Does this look like that? Not really. Not really. Okay. Dashboard home. My okay. All oh, right. We need to go into the GraphQL Playground. GraphQL Playground. Uh, I don't see it anywhere. Let's see, maybe if I create a new database. FQL. No. Hmm. Fauna's GraphQL Playground. Oh, this is a mystery. Dashboard home, MyDB, GraphQL. 
so presumably they've created a database and then selected GraphQL, right? So we call it my DB. Well, there we go. You know, a sentence would have made that a lot easier here, right? A sentence of explanation, not just save the file and upload it to GraphQL. Okay. I still don't know where I'm going here. All right. Let's create this as a file somewhere. It doesn't say where. I don't know where. So I'll just go all the way up to CSS tricks again. Um, new file. Oh, that's going to make it there. I don't want it to make it there. I want it to go all the way up to. No. I don't know where to put it. new file yeah that's better and what was it going to be called again sdl.gql sdl.gql okay. notice it, it recognized it as that kind of file all right so there's the file and i'll save it control s so now, still working here. Save the file and upload it to Fauna's GraphQL Playground. So, GraphQL Playground, let's go back in here. Upload it. Does that mean import? Probably, right? So, and this is the GraphQL Playground. So let's import schema. Where is it? It's in D, remember? And then code projects. And then in um, CSS tricks, right? Yeah. CSS tricks, and I put it right in the top directory so it would be easy to find. And I open that. Syntax error. Ah, I can't use that. All right, goofballs. Let's try again. Import schema, the corrected version. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just the little things, eh? And you, you know, and you get an error, and if you don't have this intuition, you're just stuck. You're stopped. All right. Moving on. Moving on. The GraphQL Playground is located in the selected database. Yeah. That tells me nothing. All right, never mind. The Fauna shell allows us to write, run, and test queries. Okay. So let's see if we can't find the Fauna shell. This must be the Fauna shell. Right? Shell. Oh, okay. GraphQL. All right, that's our database with our schema. Shell is where we're writing our database. Okay. So what else is here? Database overview. It's my whole database. Collections, I have nothing yet. Indices, I have none yet. Functions, I have none yet. Shell, which is where I can write things. Shell is kind of like the cloud version of PowerShell, right? I can write commands in it. GraphQL is this 
my data and then security is the API. We'll probably come back to that. I assume we'll come back to that. All right. It's very important that Redwood and Fauna agree on the SGL. So we cannot use the original representation or the original SDL. What was SDL again? Schema definition language. So yeah, they have to speak the same language. So we cannot use the original SDL that was entered into Fauna because that is no longer an accurate representation of the types as they exist on our Fauna database. Okay. Uh, So, and then they give us this. Is this a re revision or new version of the SDL? Don't know. No, because I think we're, we're in the shell, right? So let's look, okay, there's paginate, paginate, all right. I think we're supposed to type this into, Michelle, no, it's just an image. Yes, I don't know, okay. This is a mystery, right? I have no idea what this means. Um, I, I know that they need to agree on the schema definition language. We cannot use the original SDL that was entered into Fauna by, by us, by them, by whomever. And I assume this is the original schema? I don't know. Fauna creates an intermediary post page type which has a data object. Oh, run query. Let's run query. Ah. A sentence that said click the run query button might have helped. <laughs> oh my goodness. Come on, guys. See, right here. Tell me to click the run query button. I see. Okay, here's the... So, here's the, the convention that this author is using. See how some things are highlighted in green? Looks like those are the things that we're supposed to click. But how would you know that? Okay. All right. So this is the output of that query. The query is these three commands. It ran them and that's what it produced. All right. Good. <sighs> Redwood schema definition language. Okay. So Redwood will have such a language. This data object contains an array with all the post objects in the database. Right. We will use these types to create another schema definition language that lives inside our GraphQL directory on the API side of the Redwood project. So I'm going to create this file in this location. And we'll remember that it can't use this, right? So let's just remember this is where the file is located. It's not part of the file. 
So, okay. Let's open up now the API side, API, SRC, GraphQL. Right, and there's nothing here, but now we're going to define the schema definition language for posts. Hmm, interesting. I assume that little tick there tells us that's the end of the file and it's not just a typo. We will find out. So I'm going to copy this and now I want to put it in posts.sdl.js. So we'll go back into Visual Studio Code. I'm in the right directory. I'm going to create a file. I'm going to call that file posts.sdl.js. Pretty crazy font that they're using there too. Eh? Wow. Wow. Like that's a whacked out S. Anyhow, good thing I'm not Aaron. <laughs> I'd be looking at that. Oh, what letter is that? All right. Now I'll put the entire thing in here. Okay. Import GQL from GraphQL tag. All right. So it's importing something from Node. And it's going to export it. Oh, there's the beginning of that tick. Okay, so graph query language, and then here's the beginning, and here's the end. All right. Got to watch for these things. All right, let's save that. Control S. All right. Services. Okay, the posts service sends a query to the Fauna GraphQL API. It's requesting an array of posts, specifically the title and the body for each. These are contained in the data object from post to page. Well, okay. So this is another new file that we're creating maybe. So it's going to be in API source services, right? And we, this is the only one here that we have. So, so in this services posts, we need to create this subdirectory, new folder, posts. Okay. In that directory, we need to create a file posts.js. Okay, here it is. And then we'll put that content, and again, there's that tick, right? The data, here's the query. So this is the query, this is where we're going to send it, and this is what we're going to get back. So a, a wait, so we're going to sit there and we're going to wait for this request. Now it's JavaScript, right? So it can do other things while it's waiting for this request. It, that's how Node works, right? It'll, anyhow. So it's not going to cause our page to sit there and wait. So, okay, import requests, import GQL, all right. So that's the Node functions that will handle this. Export the post. Okay. Right. Okay, so it's exporting this constant posts. This is the definition of the content, right? This is what it's going to look like, right? Posts. It's going to be an array, probably, of data, and in each data element, there will be a title and a body. And if I wanted author, I could add that. If I wanted, uh, oh, that's not what I, I didn't copy it properly. Let's try that again. Control C, always checking. 
the whole roof track. Control V. Yeah, there we go. So if I wanted, you know, like a, a URL or an author or whatever, right, I can just add it to this data. So this is pretty open-ended. This, just as an aside, corresponds to the elements of a blog post in RSS as well. It's just a, a different way of saying the same thing. So this is all pretty familiar to me, this kind of thinking. Structured data, right? Okay, so Control S to save this. At this point, we can install GraphQL request, a minimal client for GraphQL with a promise base, that means it'll come back later, API that can be used to send our GraphQL requests. See the API, and then we're going to yarn this. Okay, so we're going to use yarn to install this. Just like we used yarn to install a page or a layout, now we're going to install a client for GraphQL. So let's go back here. Uh, okay, where was I? So let's go to CD, CD API. RS. I'm going to just do that on a habit. All right. Because I like to know. They do an LS and I'm just, okay, yeah, that's right. And now yarn. So I'm going to right click to paste this. There it is. Hit enter. Bunch of warnings. But it looks like it worked. Just having a look at those warnings. The platform Win32 is incompatible with this. Well, I'm not on Win32. Yeah, that could be a problem. You see what happens when you use Macs for stuff? <laughs> Could be a problem, right? But we don't know. All right, attach the Fauna authorization token to the request header. I knew we were going to get to security. Okay, we have GraphQL for data, Fauna for modeling that data, and GraphQL request to query it. It's kind of a weird yellow background to this. Now we need to establish a collection, the connection between GraphQL request and Fauna which we'll do by importing GraphQL request into db.js and use it as a query, use it to query an endpoint. <laughs> All right. So we'll establish a connection between GraphQL request and Fauna by importing GraphQL request into db.js and using it to query the endpoint. So we go into db.js, which we've seen before. We'll have to find it again. Uh, so where was it? DB. Oh, we were just there, weren't we? No, 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 no. DB. No. No. Oh, API source lib. Okay, API source lib, which stands for library usually. Usually a lib is usually a library of functions, db.js. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Right, so they were using Prisma, remember? That was all that stuff that we could delete, but we didn't bother just in case. And still not going to bother. <laughs> so now we're going to replace the reference to that with this. So we're going to import GraphQL request then export a constant, which is a request, an asynchronous request, which means we, we, you know, we can do other stuff while we're waiting for it. Here's the endpoint. Here's the client that will actually make the request and here's the header. So the client will make the request and in that request it'll put a header containing the authorization which will be the Fauna DB secret. Okay. 
okay and then it will try it will try to get the uh, the request if it fails it will catch an error and log it and return it all right so that's good again we're not going to put that in there so remove all of this and put that in all right control x now we're going to actually need this so this isn't going to work yet okay the graph ql is instantiated to set the header with an authorization token which we haven't created yet so that's that's a promise right we'll get that we'll get it later <laughs> uh, allowing data to flow to our app create okay we'll use the fauna shell and run a few okay we gotta put some data in the database all right so first we're gonna create a blog post so so this is the command and then this is the content of the command and we run that in this shell probably down here right Create, run query. Looks fine to me. So we see what it did, right? It's data collection post, da 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 da. And now here's an item with a reference and a timestamp in um, milliseconds. Interesting. Not sure what this is, but it might be a content based number. Don't know, just an index number. Here's the data, or it might be an ID number. I don't know, doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's a number and by the length of it, I'll bet you it's a unique number. Uh, okay, because even in milliseconds, the timestamp not guaranteed to be unique all right oops okay so we'll come back here now all right so here's the output that we got oh he didn't do it too long ago i can tell you exactly when he did it <laughs> uh, let's do that because i can <laughs> unix date that has nothing to do with our project whatsoever. <laughs> okay, so put it in. It should recognize that this is a millisecond date. And yep, Friday, November 13th, 2020, so a month ago. It's interesting, eh? He wrote this a month ago, and it's only published now. Hmm. Still, it's nice to know it's recent. I wonder what I was doing that day. I think that was a good day, actually. Anyhow. Um, hmm. Let's create another one. All right. We can do that. So we'll come back here, run another request. it's a database right I don't need to repeat the previous commands in fact I would have gotten a duplicate of my first post if I had left all of that other stuff in there okay and right oh yeah right okay I see okay good and maybe one more I thought we wanted three all right, so again, let's clear this out. Run the query. And there's our third post. All right. 
cells provide a simple and declarative approach to data fetching. They contain a GraphQL query along with the loading MTA error and success state. Each one renders itself automatically depending on what state the cell is in. Okay. So cell, you could call it an object, but we'll call it a cell. Okay, yarn, RW generate cell. Okay, it's a, I see, it's a, a redwood thing. So, okay, we're done with the database. We're back to yarn. I assume we're staying in Wow, this is a, quite a jump to something else, but okay. All right, so, all right. But it's like a page or a layout, or, you know, the other stuff. Um, a service or a function, it's just, it's a cell. I assume it stays on the API side, so I think we can just create it right here. Generate cell blog posts. Okay. And it did that. And it put it in. Oh, it's a web thing. Okay. So web source components. I don't want the marketplace stuck. Oh, oh. All right, so let's web source components blog posts sell. So these are probably things that React will work with. But let's find them. Let's find them in here. Um, so they're in web. So web SRC components blog posts sell and here's the JS and okay and there's what it looks like perfect looks the same so I can't boy that's really annoying layout I have this big black bar, okay, but I keep the bar if I narrow my page. See, look at that. Ew, ew. Okay, just an aside. All right. So, okay, so that's what we got by default. We have the query render, the data with JSON stringify. So, if you're wondering what that is, the data comes back to us from the uh, database in a format called JSON, JavaScript Object no Notation. It structures the data for us. And then you take that and stringify it. You take that structured data and you render it into a string that can be read and write as a string variable and thus printed onto pages. So we need to make some changes because, of course, so what do we need to change? Change blog posts to posts, okay. Uh, blog posts query to posts capitalized. Change the query itself. Right, instead of ID. So, right, this is back when we needed to make the uh, the schemas, schema definition language for this one match what we're using. This is what this is doing here. Okay, map over the data object. So here's how that looks. So. All right. So okay, here's this export constant. So we'll work replace 
replace that. And I doubt that it, oh, maybe down here it will have changed too. So, export, div, loading, loading. Yeah, so down here, right, blog post needs to change to posts. And we're going to, right, return JSON stringify. But in fact, here, we're just going to map it into this string. So we're not just going to stringify it. We're going to map it into some actual HTML text. That's always dicey. Oh, OK, it's a design decision. You know, it's kind of like, do you really want to be putting HTML code inside your component. Mm, well, I'm not sure I do. Because look, H2. Now that's H2 forever. Uh, but, okay, whatever. Mine is not too reason why. And maybe there's a good reason for it. Well, I'm sure there's a good reason for it. But still, I, I would do it differently if I was designing this from the bottom up. Okay, Control S to save it. Okay. Import blog posts cell to home page. All right. So the cell is that object that we've created. And it does the request for us puts all that data into this nice HTML and now we've got to get that into the home page. So here's our home page. Here's the import blog cell. So let's that's the thing that we'll need. So let's go back to the home page. Where is that? That's index.html, right? No it isn't. It's index.js. No, let's try that. <laughs> Homepage.js. Duh. Right. Uh, okay. So pages. Pages. Homepage. Homepage.js. All right. I am glad that they put these here, otherwise I'd never know. Okay, so importing the cell from just a couple directories over. Home page, and now we need to take what this cell exported and put it into the page. So blog layout, blog post cell. Okay, so cell is a component or object in the page. I would call it a box or a block or a module. It doesn't matter what you call it. So export default home page. This will probably do it when I save this. Let's go back to the home page for some fun. All right, if everything is set up right now, when I hit save, we should see the blog posts. <laughs> Empty. <laughs> so, oh, right, we don't have the API yet. Or remember that promise we made to do the uh, authentication? I wonder if they'll ever get back to that. I don't know. All right. Aha. No, they didn't. I don't know if they need it. No, it's just a playground. We shouldn't need it. But I don't know. Is empty. Let's 
that's where the empty is coming from. There's our query. Yeah, if it was an authentication error, we'd be getting an error message here. But we didn't. Instead, we got empty, so the query was never made. And here, maybe our endpoint is wrong. Yeah, I mean, like authorization bearer plus. How's it going to know to get this particular query, this particular database? this let's see what happens if we just enter it in here oh what's this string and putting it in here. Um, not here. Where would it be? It'd be in the cell, right? In the cell somewhere? Components Blog post cell? No, it wouldn't be. Um, it's going to be in the API. Source live of oh, db.js. Okay. Oops. db.js. Source live db.js. This process. DB secret I wonder if it's defined somewhere process environment Process environment fauna. Okay, so process environment dot fauna db secret. So there's an environment variable.
I assume it would go here, right? Process. Yeah, I don't know. I think it probably just go in here. Okay, what was it called again? Fauna DB underscore secret. I'm just Fauna DB underscore secret equals. basic is part of it. No, I don't know. Oops. Okay. I'll try that. I doubt that this will work. Yeah. Hmm. So why doesn't it work? I don't know why it doesn't work. <laughs> Clearly there's something that's missing, but I don't know what. Thought it might be that. But maybe not. Let's try that whole CURL. Copy curl. Let's right, see so what it looks like if I try that in the terminal. So CURL is a command that you can use to uh, send a request to a web server. So here's ours. So here's the address the headers, the origin, which is a lie, authorization, data binary, and that's where we put our query. So this will produce an error. Not bind parameter headers. Oh, it doesn't like this. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't like this except encoding. Let's try just removing that, which in theory shouldn't work. No, it still doesn't like it. Oh, well, let's go there. Why? No, I have to go all the way in there. Let's try that again. Again, 
again, because it probably shouldn't work. But. Yeah. Uh, and why can't it bind these headers? That means it's not going to bind the authorization either, is it? Yeah. Nope, didn't like that either. So curl's not working properly on this because Windows. So I can't figure it out that way. Let's go back through. Uh, let's see now. That spot where we jumped, I think. Because. I know we put the data into the database, okay. So there's the data. Let's just check this. Oh, attach the, did I skip this? Yeah, it looks like I did. Um, okay. Post service send a query. Uh, okay. Post.js. All right. Yarn. Add GraphQL. Okay. Attach the Fauna authorization token to the request header. But we haven't actually done that. We attached a variable that promises that it's the authorization token. But we haven't actually done it. Yeah, so, though we never set the authorization token here, although it's just a playground, so probably it's just HTTP head headers. Yeah, okay, so there's our authentic authorization. Query variables and HTTP headers. Let's copy that. Let's. All right. First of all, let's remove this because it didn't work. We might as well not leave it there. Let's go back into API db.js and now authorization error, blah, 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 blah. So let's check this now. Let's just call authorization and then this. Okay. So let's put that string. So it's a string. I could use double quotes too. But 
I'll stay consistent with what I've been seeing and use a single quote. Now I'll paste that in. Right, see they've used the double quotes. I'll remove these double quotes. It might have worked if I put the basic in when I had it in the uh, process.env thing. That might have worked too. But this might work. Control S. Because this is, remember I mentioned JSON before, right? This is JSON, basically. It's a JSON structure. I shouldn't need quotes around the word authorization because it knows it's a string always. Okay, Control S. Ah, there it is. That's it. That was the problem. <laughs> okay, so what was the issue? It never told us to replace all of this with the uh, authentication that's provided here in HTTP headers. Oh. Uh, my goodness. Oh, you've got to know what you're doing to work your way past that. That's, that's, that's a killer. That's a backbreaker for 90% of the people reading this article. That's probably where it's going to fail if they've made it this far. Okay. We're almost done. We're almost done. Okay. There it is. There's the result. Now, Vercel, whatever that is, we're using it to build the project and deploy it to Vercel's hosted platform, which offers build previews when code is, is not yet, um, is pushed to the project repository. So if you don't already have one, grab a Vercel account continue with github just like before off the rise we want to link these accounts oh yeah yeah i want to link different browser Vercel must have been something else in the past because this is the first time I've used it. Blink. All right. Now it transforms my project. Wow, this is like. This was something else. I don't know what it was, but let's just check. You know, it's a place. Uh, so. Zeet, it was Zeet, okay. Yeah, Zeet was a, a one-button cloud hosting service, and now it's for sale. Okay. I knew I had used it. Well, they knew I had used it. I didn't know. I had never heard of it before. Okay. And now I've done the same thing again that I did last time. <laughs> so I'll create a new window. Paste the go. back to our instructions again. All right, so there's Vercel, there's GraphQL, here we are. All right. So, why Vercel over NetLifey or Amazon or, or you know, 
whatever. I don't know. Again, you know, it's probably a marketing thing. You know, why are we using this fauna instead of? Why are we using Vercel instead of? Marketing. Maybe they're being paid. Maybe they just know somebody. Who knows? But that's how you get into these articles, right? That's how you get your service into these articles. Is you do something. Maybe the author used work for me. We don't know. Okay. All right. So we have to make one change to the project's configuration to integrate it with Vercel. Let's open NetLifey. Remember why Vercel over NetLifey. And change the API proxy path to slash API. So where is NetLifey.toml? netlifey.toml there's redwood.toml I don't even know what TOML stands for so let's find out what TOML stands for first something markup language Tom's obvious minimal language The file format for configuration files. Okay. So let's come back to our instructions. Let's open NetLifey Toml. Is it in Vercel maybe? Boy, that would be handy if you told us where it is, eh? Uh, hmm. What's well, not in here? Maybe I have to make one. Copy this. Okay, so I'm going to search. Was it, it was called Redwood, right? <laughs> I keep forgetting the name of our project. Redwood. Yeah. So Redwood. And the name of the file. Okay. redwood.toml right. I don't know it's a mystery searching for that and see what happens. Alright. 
all of this is so new there's not really going to be very much eh? That's why they're not using Prisma because they're moving to Prisma 2 and so using Prisma would be out of date almost as soon as the article is published. for anything that says redwood.tumble or netify.tumble maybe they meant like he said net lifey maybe he meant netify no it's net lifey it's in there and it's, it's in this Let's just see if that file even exists. So D. CSS tricks node modules subscriptions transport WS oh my goodness <laughs> I never would have found it although I say that I just found it okay so code project CSS tricks node modules subscriptions transports WS But no, 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 because this isn't at all what it looks like, right? Like he's saying you have to change out API proxy path. And yet, I look in here, I don't see API proxy path anywhere. So this isn't it. Do we get any more results? Probably not. I bet you that'll be the only one. Yeah. So maybe he meant something different. Maybe it's a TOML, the only TOML in the entire project. Is redwood.toml, right? And it sort of makes sense that they would do that. And there's API proxy path. So all bet this is what needs to change here right and change the value not the string don't change the string change the value of API proxy path to this so 
so and that's how I know right like it, it it's got the quotation marks around it and the value has the quotation marks around it so that's got to be it and that's it so not let net life dot tumble redwood dot tumble control s that might have been something that changed in the last month in all fairness <laughs> between the time you wrote it and the time you published it all right now let's log into Vercel <laughs> okay so yeah there's a bunch of steps that are being skipped here yeah, so redwood seeks to be universally portable of course all right so we've made the change now let's log into Vercel and this is where we enter the repo of the the URL of the repo So, okay, here we're actually going to be using his repository, right? Um, if I wanted this to be on my GitHub, I would have to actually create this as my own repository. So github.com slash downs slash CSS tricks. And I could do that. I could do that. Um, let's see, I, I'm, I have. And <laughs> this is integrated with GitHub. Uh, you have to set it up. It's not. So this doesn't have a GitHub, but I can initialize one. So. And then I can publish it to GitHub, or I can just directly publish it. So, why don't I do that? And that way I'll be able to test this and, and use my repository instead of his. So, I'm going to publish to GitHub CSS tricks. Uh, publish to public repository. First commit and CSS extensions that handle TOML files. <laughs> Successfully published. Yeah, so that's a whole separate subject, right? Uh, linking up Visual Studio Code with GitHub, but it, and it takes a while just to get your brains around GitHub, but if you can do it. Now with one button, now let's go to GitHub, right? So here's GitHub and I can go to my repositories. So there it is, down CSS tricks updated 40 seconds ago. And here's everything the whole works as my repository so now I'll capture that URL I'll use this URL instead of the one that he's using most readers will probably just use this not realizing that they're using his production code well his demonstration production code instead of the stuff that they've just spent I don't know either anywhere between 10 minutes and an hour or two hours working on obviously right you know you could do this in 10 minutes and if I was just zipping through it on my own I could probably zip through it really quickly but still there are these issues that you encounter and that's going to take more time but if you just know this stuff then you just skip right through it all right so okay uh let's go to Vercel Let's import project. Yeah, import project to connect 
its service to the project repository. So let's import project, import git repository, put my URL here, and continue. So I'm taking all that code that I just loaded into GitHub. So remember, I did all the coding on my own computer. I uploaded it to GitHub. Now, this cloud service is bringing the code in from GitHub. And deploying it as a cloud application. All right, so let's see. I don't want to just skip through this. Okay, import projects, CSS. Simply select Redwood from the preset options. Always worry when they say simply. Yeah, <laughs> because look at all the other choices that there were. Redwood.js framework preset. Okay. Okay, we've come pretty far along, but even though the site is now live, the database isn't connected. to deploy yet. Redwood. Simply select Redwood from the preset options and we're good to go. Does that mean click on deploy? That meant click on continue because that's what I did. Remember he was using green buttons before, now he's using blue buttons. And they're using blue buttons here, but they weren't green buttons on the other site. Build and output settings, output directory, environment variables, variable. Ah. <laughs> All right. I'll bet you this is where we're connecting our uh, database. So let's not click that. Okay. To fix that, we'll add the Fauna DB secret token from our Fauna account to our environment variables in Vercel. Right. So Fauna DB secret and then encrypt it. All right, so we, we're going to have to do a couple of things here. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, well, I think I can re-import it. Uh, okay, so first of all, first of all, uh, But so you, you see again, like it's just. Oh, look, production preview. Okay. Yeah, this has changed, hey? This doesn't look the same, does it? Import project. Environment variable. Yeah, this, this looks a bit different, but this is the thing. Okay, so have I actually imported it yet? No, I haven't. So let's, first of all, we're going to go back and break what we had. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to go back. I'm going to go back up here, all the way back up to where we had that environment variable. Here it is. Bearer plus maybe this will work, maybe it won't. Doesn't matter. I, I want to try it this way first. 
because this is an environment variable. And the reason why this is good is because now the environment variable is being handled completely separately from the code, which is what you want. Okay, so let's go back now and fix that. That was in db.js. So we're going to go back to db.js. So back to our source, back to API, back to, I think it was in source, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe not. DB, source, live, db.js. Okay, so you remember we had this here, we had to put that in. But now, I'm going to change that back. So authorization bearer plus, and now the secret. I'm still not sure about that bearer business. We might have to change it again, but we'll see. So I'll save that. Now that breaks our test version, right? Um, Although, again, we might have been able to fix it in that EMV. I don't know. And I'm not going to check because I don't think we're into a four or five hour mark on this video. Okay. So now that's a change. So source control, right? So GitHub, first of all, we staged the change. Now a message. Update. Uh, to use environment variable for authorization for GraphQL GraphDB authorization. All right, and off your cameras. So it's just the change that I'm making. All right, so that's the explanation. Graph. Commit the change. The change has been committed. And should be push the change that will push the change to github and if we go to github we will see a change let me just reload it there's the change that i made all right and i haven't actually pulled it into vercel yet so i'm fine okay variable name whatever it was called, Fauna something, eh? uh, Fauna DB secret. Okay, Fauna DB secret, put that in here, and then we'll get the string. Oh, I should have kept the string. <laughs> oh, well, it's here. We'll get the string from here. not going to be able to tell whether it's the right string because it'll encrypt it right away but oh okay it didn't encrypt it right away so that is the right string I'll add this environment variable all right okay back down here yeah. So, the value encrypted, good. Now our application is complete. So, let's deploy. Cube 
for deployment, building a runtime. See, his would have worked perfectly, right? If I had just used his, I wouldn't have even known about this whole thing. So it's building a cloud container here. And all the steps that we took, installing Yarn, installing NPM, all of that it's doing for this container. So basically it's building an exact copy of what I have in the container, except without all of my other files and my whole computer. So it's going to take a bit to fetch packages. And unmet dependencies. Ooh, that's not good. The platform Linux is incompatible with this module. Hmm. So some of the stuff might not work. It's all just warnings though. So and it's just the, the whole storybook. Remember, we looked at storybook. And we didn't use it for anything. Oh, it's generating a Prisma client. I probably shouldn't have used that. But maybe it doesn't matter. Okay. See, and this is the whole idea. Like, yeah, you could just write some code. But the whole idea is now... I write it once here, I click a button, I deploy here, a button, I deploy there, right? Done. The deployment started two minutes ago. Okay. So where do I go see it? Oh, uploading build outputs. Completing deployment. My project has been successfully deployed. Let's visit it. Oh. <laughs> That's too bad. I don't have any blog posts. Can I redeploy it? Yeah, to up to push, push to run master. Um, edit. Right, okay, I can go right into here. So what if I didn't use the employment? See, I, I'm thinking, what I'm thinking here is it's not working because I have this extra word here, bearer plus. I'm going to remove that. Control S. Stage the change. Okay, authentication, that's all I need to know. Commit the change. All of these things, staging, committing, etc., they all have their own meaning. The reason why we do them, push it. Now, in theory this should all this change like I should it might take some time for it to, to propagate but in theory I should see the new version no that still didn't work So 
Uh, yeah, I'm sure his worked. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh yeah, no, his worked fine. But mine didn't. There's his GitHub repo. Source live db.js. Well, he has bearer plus. So I wonder why that works for him and not for me. Now we know it didn't work for me. See, I don't know exactly what he entered into. Uh, oops, I don't know what I'm doing there. I don't know exactly what he entered into his environment variable either, right? All right, let's return our code to what he has. We'll go back to that again. Bearer plus. Find our DB secret. Yes. All right, we can go through this whole process again. it gets shorter and shorter and shorter as I do this three times. See, that's the weakness of doing it this way, right? You, you, you know, I almost want to just pop that full up. I, you know, I almost think I will. I'll just, I just want it to work right now because it's been a while. It's been a very long, uh, I'm just going to copy this. It's so hard to copy. And I'm just going to use this <laughs> directly. Control C. Let's go back to my code. stage it again. Stage. Authentication. See now, see what's happening here, right? This is going to go into my GitHub code. And that would be very bad if it was anything other than a sandbox. So that's why I want to use the environment variable. I don't know why it's not working. There's just something, maybe I don't use the word basic or I don't know, right? But something. See, I, I can't tell because he hasn't told us. Let's go back here. He hasn't told us exactly what he's put in here it just says encrypted well, that doesn't help us right and so we'll add the fauna db secret token from our fauna right but it doesn't is it that full thing that includes the word basic i don't know or maybe it, i don't know there's all kinds of different possible explanations so don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, anyhow, committing. Oh, I already did. Push. All right, back into here. Building. Okay, oh, it's deploying. Maybe I tried it too quickly last time. Just 
go with Elden. Yeah, I probably tried it too quickly last time. Almost done my coffee. So I can fiddle around with that. And there the application is complete. We did it. I hope this not only gets you super excited about working with Jamstack and serverless, oh yeah, uh, but got a taste of some new technologies in the process. Um, Okay, so it's pushed. Let's go visit it. And there it is, it is working. So, uh, I could go back, try different combinations to see if there was a magic way to make the environment variable work. Um, I don't know. Again, it would have been helpful to, to see that very explicitly, but we can't see that but there we have redwood js plus fauna db plus vercel the redwood is our application uh the application if we loaded it onto vercel which is a cloud hosting site and then fauna db is a different cloud hosting site where we've put our graph database um, and we can produce a blog out of it crappy looking blog but you know you, you take it from there right and we, we've got some pages and uh, and the rest so uh, that's it for this broadcast kind of longer than I thought it would be but that's okay right uh, if you're still with me <laughs> congratulations uh, following something like this is a lot harder than actually doing it and I've long lost my music page for an outro. So we'll just pretend that we're hearing the outro music here. If you have any comments or anything like that, by all means, send me a note. My Twitter feed is at Downs. Um, you're... <laughs> You are getting more views than when it was less than half a minute. Yeah, so I bet you that, and that's, oh, 26 minutes ago. Wow. So that's impressive. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so if you are watching this, uh, that's pretty cool. So anyhow, send me a, a tweet at Downs or an email or whatever. I do hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you an insight into how your brain needs to work when you're following these, uh, you know, follow it guides. Uh, and also to the authors of CSS tricks, despite my criticisms, and that would be uh, Anthony Campolo. Um, I did find some issues with your column, but you know, we're working with the bleeding edge here. Uh, and so things are tricky. Um, but uh, thanks for writing the article. It was interesting, and I had a lot of fun with it. So that's it. Bye, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. I'm Stephen Downs.